Okay, so um, we are looking at the decomposition of an insecticide in water at 12 degrees Celsius, and it's first order kinetics. So that means we're going to be using information for force for a first order reaction. Okay, now it tells us that the rate constant is 1.45 per year. So the rate constant is going to be K. So our K value is equal to 1.45 per year. Okay, and the units of measurements shows us that it's also first order. Why'd you write the seconds? Oh, thank you. Have it. Could we convert it into seconds? If you, if you really it? wanted to, but you'll have to convert it back. So okay. yeah, please don't. Okay. So the quantity of this insecticide is washed into a lake on June 1st, and it leads to a concentration of this value right here. So your initial concentration, so let's write initial concentration is going to be five times 10 to the negative seven grams per centimeters cubed, same thing as milliliters. Okay. So that's your initial concentration. Okay, and then the average temperature is 12 degrees Celsius. So um, the temperature is not gonna affect the K value in this problem, okay? All right, so for part A, it's asking us for the concentration in the following year. So what we are looking for in this problem is the final concentration, okay? That's what we're looking for. Okay, and the time that passes is, yeah, one year. So there you go. So I always recommend going through the problem, uh, extracting all the information, all the value so that we can figure out what equation we should use um, so that we don't mix things up halfway through the problem. Okay. But any questions on the four values that we got? Okay. All right. So let's take a look at our chart um, and we can figure out uh, what equation will probably help us best. So if you guys take a look at the chart, um, the best way to do this is with the integrated rate law, because that's the one that takes into account time. Now, you could just use the regular rate law and take time into account. Just make sure you balance all your units. Um, but I'm going to use the integrated rate law just because I haven't shown you guys how to use it yet. Okay. Yeah. How do we know which order to use? Uh, it tells us that it's first order oh. in the problem. Yeah. Good question, though. Yeah. Um, I think the integrated rate laws are on your paper. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's use the integrated rate law, <clears throat> excuse me, for uh, a first order reaction. So you're going to get the natural log of the final concentration, which is equal to negative kT plus the natural log of the initial concentration. Okay, so all we're basically doing is we are just plugging in our values into this problem and then plug and chug in the calculator. And we'll be all done. Yeah, what's up? Um, they write it as like uh, natural log uh, final minus natural log initial equals negative. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's just rearranging the equation. Yeah. Okay, so let's plug our values in. So natural log of the final concentration is going to equal our K value. So negative 1.45 year per year. Okay, our time, which is one year, okay, plus the natural log of the initial concentration, which is five times 10 to the negative seven grams per centimeters cubed. And I'm running out of space. Okay. Any questions on why we plugged in those values? Okay, yes. Yeah, it's uh the question tells us it's first order kinetics. No, you're good. Um, why do we use the year inverse? Uh, because that's our k value. If you remember for uh what is it? The k value for a first order reaction, it's always a uh, one over whatever your time is, so seconds, year, and that's why we use that. And basically it's what allows us to cancel out our units properly. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so I know we got a natural log and it can get kind of scary with the math. So let's go through it and then we'll finish up the problem. Okay, so I'm going to simplify the right side of the react of the equation. Uh, you should get negative 15.959, something around there. Okay, first you want to find the natural log and then you're going to multiply and then add the two values together. Okay, now how do we isolate 
the final concentration from the natural log. Anyone remember? Yes, to the power of E. Okay, if you go to the power of E, it cancels out the natural log. You are left with the the final concentration and it's equal to E to the power of negative 15.959. That's gonna give you the final value of 1.173 times 10 to the negative seven. And that's gonna be your final concentration. Okay, so the math is getting a little bit trickier. Um, and it will continue to get harder. I think it peaks in the next unit where it's like, that's where you need to be very good with your algebra. All right, any questions? This is part A. This part A. <laughs> what? <laughs> you ladies have too much fun. All righty, guys. Now that we went over part A, do you think you could figure out part B on your own? Yes? Or do you want me to get you guys started on part B? Get you started? Okay. Anyone still need this? Okay. Let's go over part B. Now, part B is a little bit different um, because which variable are we solving for in part B? Yeah, time. We're looking for time. Because if you look at part B, it's asking how long will it take? And the way that we measure how long something takes to happen is time. So in part B, we're not looking for concentration or nothing. We're looking for time. Okay, so we're interested in finding time. <clears throat> okay, and we want to find how long it takes for the concentration to decrease to 3.0 times 10 to the negative seven. And so what variable does this number represent? A yeah, AF, F, okay. Okay, so in order to find time, that means we need AF. The K value is constant, right? It's gonna be 1.45 per year. Okay, the only other value we need is the initial concentration, which we have right here. Okay, so we have the initial, the final, and the rate constant. And I will give you guys about three minutes, see if you guys can figure out the time. You're gonna be using the same equation. Um, so I'll put this, put it up here for you guys to refer to. Okay, and so from here, it's just plugging and chugging and figuring out um, the algebra. So let's test your algebra skills. And then in, I forgot what the time I gave was, but let's say four minutes. Let's uh, go over the answer in four minutes, okay? What you should get. Okay, so all we're going to do is plug and chug. So you're going to first find the natural log of 3 times 10 to the negative 7 grams per centimeter cubed. That's going to be equal to our K value, which is 1.45 per year. And then we're going to have our time. And we're going to add that to the natural log of the initial concentration which is five times 10 to the negative seven. Okay, so for our calculations, first thing you wanna do is probably punch these into your calculator. And then after that, you're gonna subtract the natural log of five times 10 to the negative seven from both sides, okay? That's how you get, that's how you can isolate the T. Okay. So that's gonna leave us with negative 0.511 is equal to negative 1.45 per year and then time, okay? And then from there, very simple, you just need to divide by negative 1.45 on both sides. That's gonna give you a time value of 0.352 years, okay? So if you got something close to that, you should be good. 0.3 around there, mid 0.3s.
Yes. Um, the units of measurement will cancel out because it's uh, grams per centimeters cubed, right? And then so when you put a natural log, they're still going to be grams per centimeters cubed. And then um, they'll cancel out with each other. Yeah. Good question, though. And also, um, we would measure time just in years. Uh, we don't do years, centimeter cubed divided by uh, grams. And so just make sure that it fits with the very end. Okay, and for things like time where you already know the unit of measurement, you can just put that in there if you know your math is correct. Yeah. Yeah, because you're dividing by, um, here, let's, I'll do it right here. So you have no units on the left side. And then you got uh, minus one E years. So it's going to be years. So if you divide by 1.5, it's the same thing as multiplying by years because it's inverse. And then so you'll get years on the other side. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Exponents make the units weird too, or harder to keep track of. Okay. All righty. You guys ready to move on to the next one? Okay. Let's move on to 11.15, which is another FRQ style problem, but this one has a graph. Isn't that fun, guys? No. Yes, we love graphs. Good, good, good. I'll give you more. Wow, I know. Well, math is easy too. You can just solve it. Come on, man. But if you were to like ask me, oh, what's the... All right, anyway, I'm going to give you guys about seven minutes to try this one out too. Um, If you guys can't see the graph, um. You guys can pull it up on Canvas, or I can try to zoom in somehow. Just let me know. But I would recommend just pulling it up on Canvas because we'll be following along anyway. Um, so, yeah, seven minutes to try this out, and then we'll go over it together. All righty, guys. Uh, so, Half-Life, or Part A, the Half-Life, it should be very easy for you guys to figure out. Half-Life is the amount of time it takes to go from the original concentration to halfway. So, half of 0.1 is 0 0.05. So, you just want to line it up with the line and then see what time it is it's about 350 350 yeah 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 you can estimate it yeah mm -hmm. you can't put the exact value you can't you, there, it's impossible to figure out the actual exact oh, value here. Oh, you calculated for it? Yeah. Then yeah, that's fine. But it says it says use the figure, so you can refer to the figure and be like the figure. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, I would just tell that that's like four that's like all the yeah three forty six point forty five more significant figures. How many more? Six. Oh my gosh, they didn't give me the thousand. That. Well, that's your fault. Oh, it's, yeah. Actually, I told you to skip the reading, too. Never mind. Yeah. On my first day of like my chemistry group, we, had like, we spent like an hour on six days. Now, like, it was yeah, so I don't think it's that necessary. It, you can get most of the points without it. Yeah. Most? The, like the vast majority, like 99.5%. What about the 0.5%? Okay. All right, Josie. <laughs> Sig figs, significant figures. It's not that important. Okay, so let's uh move on. So you're going to use a half-life to calculate the rate constant. Now, to calculate the rate constant, you're going to use the exact same formula, the integrated rate law. Okay. And then that is going to allow us to figure out um the half-life, or sorry, the rate constant. So if I'm looking for rate constant, you are looking for K. And so you just need to plug in all of these values. Now, you know the time. The time is going to be 350 seconds. Uh, what's the initial concentration? Yeah, 0.1. So 0.1 molarity. And then your final for a half-life is half of that, so 0.05. Okay? So I am going to give you guys the numbers, and you should get K is equal to 0 0.00198 per second. If you rounded that to 0 0.002, that is also fine. Anything close to that is good. Okay. I'm amazed, impressed, so proud of you ladies. 
I was like, I'm like, this doesn't be right. It's like going from 100 to 90, but I realized it's zero to one. Yeah. Like, that yeah, it's okay. The AP graders will not know what was in your head. Yes, yes, yes. Like, if you use uh, the time at like 100 and you use the uh, budget number, right? Like, you can you get 0. 0.2. Yeah. 0, 0. 0.2. So, like, it, could you use that or? 0. 0.002. If you use 600 as your half life. Yeah. No, 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 not as a half life. It's no. at the time. It's, like, then... the, it's like the half life people would say. Uh... So you get your half life, which is so yeah. I mean, if the if if changing the time that much is so is super insignificant in the k value, they're gonna check for more significant figures. Oh okay. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I know. If we use half life, what? Sorry, I can't hear that last part. Uh huh. Yeah, you could also use that as well. Yeah, I think it's up on the table up there. Oh, uh, right here. Oh, but you would have to find the K value. Yeah, but you can just do 350 and then 0. 0.63, 693 on the top and then K and then solve for K. Yeah. Yeah, but I would always recommend instead of trying to use the half-life formula, use the integrated rate law because, I mean, first of all, it's practice. That's the one you're going to get on the exam. And I think it's just more accurate. Yeah. Because you do get, you can get potentially get more significant. Yeah. Sorry, what was that? Yeah, this, these are the ones that you're going to want to know. Because this is the best way to learn all the different concepts and the different ways you can use them. Yeah. All righty, guys. Let's move on to the next or like new content. Okay. So we're going to talk about temperature and rate. Now, at the very beginning of the unit, a very, very long time ago, um, we learned that temperature affects rate, right? The hotter it is, the more collisions there are, the stronger the collisions, and so the rate increases, okay? So that's basically what we're going to be talking about. So use that as kind of your background, the basis for where you build this knowledge on, okay? Okay, so the reason why temperature matters is because if something is moving faster and they're kind of enclosed in an area, that means there's going to be more collisions in between or between the molecules, right? Because they're moving more quickly, and so they can have more collisions. Now, the reason why that matters, and this is why this is called kinetics, is if you look at the actual way these molecules collide, not only do they need to collide with the right molecules, they also need to collide in the correct way, okay? This is a good way to think about it. Again, we're going to think about a guy and a girl, okay? You're on a, let's say, fifth date, okay? Now, if you want chemistry to happen, I think at the fifth date, if, if, if things are going well, right, and the guy grabs the girl's hand, right? That's appropriate on a fifth date, right? I waited to seven, but fifth date is kind of an appropriate time to hold, to hold hands, right? Okay, now that is when the collision is a good collision. So if you guys look, this is the guy's hand. Okay, it's incoming to the lady's hand, and there's going to be a collision, and there, the reaction is going to happen, right? She's going to be happy, he's going to be happy, and it's going to be good chemistry, right? However, what if there's a bad collision, okay? So instead of grabbing her hand, Right, the hand's moving too fast and he accidentally grabs her butt. Oh my goodness. What's gonna happen? It's an ineffective collision. And he's gonna and she's gonna kick him out and he's just gonna go away sad and alone by himself. Yeah. So make sure in dating that you go for an effective collision, okay? Read the room, read the boundaries, okay? And make sure you don't grab whoever's butt by accident, okay? So, my point is, these collisions, it's better to have more collisions because you increase the chance of having an effective one where the molecules bump into each other in the correct orientation, okay? Make sense? I kind of lost my train of thought there halfway through, but. Yeah. 
Hey, I think I am the best because it was one and done. I have a hundred percent chance success rate. Okay, dated one girl and married her. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. All right. So that's that's basically the mechanics that you guys need to know. They also need to collide in the correct way. Okay. Now, not only do they need to collide in the right way, but in a reaction, they also need to, because these molecules, they need to have a certain amount of energy in order to react. And you guys really want to write this part down, okay? Okay, activation energy is the amount of energy these molecules need to have in order to react with one another, okay? And I'll talk about um, how to read this chart in just a second, but just make sure you guys write down activation energy or know what it is. The way that we... Um, what is it? Notate activation energy is EA, okay? E subscript A. So if you ever see EA, that's activation energy. What's up? Yeah, activation energy is the amount of energy that molecules need in order to react. So another dating example. Let's just be honest, guys. Personality is very important. However, in order for there to be a reaction, the other person needs to meet a certain standard of looks, right? Let's just be real. We are all, I'm an adult. You guys are young adults, okay? And we all know that no matter how good a person's personality is, if they don't meet the activation energy, aka the looks, there's not, that reaction is not going to take place, okay? It's just the way the world works. Okay, same thing with molecules, okay? They need to have a minimum amount of energy in order for them to react, okay? Oh, no, uh, you guys, yeah, you guys can jot down the graph real quick. Um, Don't start writing in it yet, Um, but I will tell you guys how to notate it. You'll, you're going to want to know how to read this kind of energy chart, okay? All righty. So copy down this graph. We're going to write a little bit inside of it. So make it big enough to write in. Don't make it like a whole page or anything. That's a waste of space. Uh, but we are going to uh, write in this graph because you guys do need to know how to read these activation energy charts. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you. All righty, guys. So let's talk about activation energy, okay? So when we have a compound, so let's start in the beginning of the story, okay? We got compounds, okay? So we got two molecules, okay? We'll, we'll say red and blue, okay? These are the two reactants. Now, they start at a certain level of energy, right? Because every molecule is moving, so they have some sort of kinetic energy, okay? Let's just give it some arbitrary number. Let's say that this line is, I don't know, 10, okay? So we'll say the free energy is 10. Now, they have an energy level of 10, but in order for them to actually react, they need to exceed this what we call an energy barrier, okay? Sounds like something from a movie, right? It's an energy barrier. Basically, this is the amount of energy they need to overcome or they need to get this much energy to get over this little hill right here, okay? And only once they have this amount of energy can they finish the reaction and go to the products, okay? So going back to my example, okay? This is your guy and this is your girl, okay? I made her neck really long, sorry. Okay, color is not gender specific, okay? Anyway, so they have a certain level of active, they have a certain level of energy, right? They have a certain level of good looks, okay? Good looking guy, good looking girl, okay? Now, even though they're both good looking, unless they put in the energy, right? They put in the energy 
to make that relationship work, the reaction is not going to finish, right? And so what they need to do is they need to put in the energy, they need to put in the work in order to get over this energy barrier, okay? So this right here are going to be all the fights they have to go through. These are the struggles, right? All the communication that they have to do, right? They need to talk things out. They need to understand one another. They need to make sacrifices, blah, 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 blah. All the energy they need to put together. And then once they finally overcome that energy barrier, they can be together and become one. Oh, it's beautiful, huh? No, no, marriage is the best. Marriage, marriage is the best. Well, I guess we can put this as the the amount of stress goes down. The amount, because as you go through time, it gets easier and easier. The sacrificing becomes easier. The communication gets easier. Anyway. Oh, dude. All right. Makes sense? Now, going back to chemistry talk, um, instead of humanizing these things, because these things don't have feelings. Okay? So this point of greatest energy, it's called the transition state, and this is referred to as the activated complex. Now, the activated complex is kind of a weird state. It's where the molecules kind of have a bond but they're not so they're not separate molecules anymore but they're also not the same okay so i'm going to show you guys an example of what that looks like so you guys don't need to copy this down but we are taking a look at an example of this compound right here okay now as you put this is your starting point and as you put energy into this compound the compound is going to start to bend right and then at the highest point, it's where it kind of has like a partial bond still. So it's still kind of all together, but it's called an activated cons a complex. It's in this weird transition state where it's not the reactants and it's not the products yet. It's still in the process of like breaking. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then after the activated complex is formed, it's all downhill from there. It gets easier and easier, and then the reaction can take place. Okay, that's what happens. Yeah. No, not not really. You just need to know, be able to read this chart that this is the energy that it needs to overcome. Yeah. What's that being? No, that's a good question. It does not always drop down. So if you guys take a look at this, and that was the next point that I was going to make. Um, if you guys take a look at this, is energy higher in the reactants or the products? The reactants. So the energy, the total amount of energy in the system drops. What type of reaction is that? Yes, this is an exothermic reaction. Endothermic, it would look different. It would look something like this. Yeah. So this is an exo. This is an exo, yeah. So that's not always the way. It's not always what it looks like, but it will always have the active the energy barrier that it needs to overcome. All you need to do is know, is the reactants higher or the products higher? If the if the products are lower, it's exo. The products are higher, it's endo, because it needs to absorb energy to get to a higher energy state. And then these products can have their own reaction. Exactly. Yeah, afterwards. This is just one step in that reaction. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's the process. That's like the hardest point for them to bond. Yeah, it's like where they're bonding. And are you talking about with a different reactant? This is all talking about one reaction. So yeah, when, so while it's in a transition state, can it react with something else? Are you, is that what you're asking? The transition state is when the molecules are reacting. It's like the process of the reaction. It's while they're still reacting before they're at the product part. Cause it's not like magic where one thing turns into another thing. It needs to go through this process where it's changing over time. Granted, most reactions are pretty quick. Um, but it still takes time for them to take place. It's that weird state where they're turning into the products. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So through the collision. Yeah, because like a car, right, is moving. You're standing there. You have less energy. The car hits you. You have more energy. And so perfect way to think of it. Yeah. Um, what if you get can you go over the transition line? Like if you get too much energy, you still have it. No, it's not gonna it's not gonna like overflow with energy. Yeah. Good question though. All right. Any questions? Okay. So let's look more at this chart because it'll um 
we're going to take a look at <clears throat> some different charts and then we're going to uh, take a look at um, how to read these charts a little more. Okay. So first thing we're going to do for 11.16 is we're going to rank these reactions from slowest to fastest. They're very easily numbered one, two, three. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at number one, okay? So number one, okay, you have your reactants right here at the bottom of the hill, and you have your products here at, oh wait, yeah, the bottom of the hill and the other bottom, the other side, okay? Now, before we get started, <clears throat> excuse me, is this an exothermic or endothermic reaction? So. Okay, this is exo, and we know that because the products have less energy than the reactants, right? So they lost energy. Now we can actually take a look at this and we can talk about what the enthalpy is. Okay, so I want you guys to take a look at the graph for number one and just think about it. Don't say anything. What do you think the change in enthalpy for the reaction is? So think about it. Okay. Okay, so obviously it's XO, right? So it's gonna be negative, okay? And then it's going to be negative 10 kilojoules per mole, okay? Now, the reason why is because it when you guys are talking about the enthalpy, you don't care about how high it went. You're only look at, looking at the net change. The net change was negative 10. So if this was like at 20 and then it went down to 10, the net change, the net change is going to be um, between the reactants and the products, okay? Yeah. Do they ever ask about enthalpy? Yeah, they could ask about and then that. If they did ask about enthalpy, could they say, what's the enthalpy from the peak of the react, like the transition state to? Yeah, so they would ask, what is the what is the height or like how much energy does do you need to put in in order for the reaction to happen? That would be the height of the activation energy, and that's fifteen. So it needs fifteen uh, kilojoules of energy in order to for the reaction to happen, but the net change in the system is going to be negative ten. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, they love these charts. Love these charts. Okay. Okay. So with that in mind, now that you guys are more comfortable reading this, um, based on what we know about thermodynamics and reactions and energy, I want you guys to finish up A and B. Okay. For A, you're going to rank them from slowest to fastest. Okay, we're going to assume that they all have the same starting point. And then after that, see if you guys can rank them from slowest to fastest when they go in reverse, because reactions are reversible. Okay, so first rank them going from left to right, and then rank them if we were going right to left products to reactants, which ones would be slowest to fastest, okay? Take about five minutes to try that. We're going to have to read the graphs. All the info is on the graphs, and then after that, we'll go over it together, okay? Same page. Okay, so um, first let's talk about what constitutes a faster reaction than another reaction, okay? Now, um, when you guys are looking at um, reaction speed in terms of activation energy, all you want to think about is how high the energy barrier is, okay? So let's just think about it. If an energy barrier is higher, do you think the reaction is going to be slower or faster? Slower. Slower, because the higher the energy hill, okay, so yeah. Higher the activation energy, okay, it's going to be slower. Why is it slower? Because you need, yeah, it needs more energy in order for it to happen, okay? It is like a roller coaster, yeah. Okay. Same thing with the dating example. If you are more high maintenance for the relationship to work out, it's going to take a lot more energy, right? Yeah. Are we talking about the speed of like molecules? No, what? This is a slower reaction, more energy, and that can refer to the speed of the molecules. That could also refer to the concentration of the molecules because of the if you have more stuff, they can bump into each other more often, right? So there are different ways that you can look at it. Yeah, faster and slower, I meant the speed of the reaction. Yeah, yeah, this is why we need to qualify all these things. Yeah, but good question. Okay, so higher activation energy makes it slower. Okay, again, it's like when the two people are high maintenance. You got to put more energy into it, right, in order for the reaction to take place. Okay, but if they're both low maintenance, a bit easier for the reaction to take place. Okay, so out of these, which one do you think is the slowest 
two. Yeah, two, because it has the highest activation energy. Let's take a look at the next one. Which one is second slowest? Three, and then one. And it's because one has the lowest activation energy. Okay, yeah. Um, it's just the way they drew the graphs. Um, don't worry too much um, in terms of like where the graphs end. Just look at the numbers that they give you. Yeah, they're not going to ask you about the end point or nothing. Good question, though. Mm, no, not really. Yeah, it has to do with the area under the curve. Um, but that's calculus, calculus, so don't need to worry about it. No, there was a there was a math there was a math movie that I watched in high school, and then there this uh this teacher was uh teaching calculus, and the Spanish speaker came in and was like, "Hey, what's calculus? Hey, calculus." So it, that always stuck with me. I forgot it was like a teacher that taught math to like underprivileged students, and then they all ended up like scoring really high on the math SAT or something like that. Yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a true story. Yeah. Is it? Oh, okay. I don't remember the name. I don't remember anything about the movie. Okay, so let's go reverse reaction now. Um, so we need to go in reverse. So if you take a look at this reverse reaction, what's the new height of the energy barrier for the reverse reaction? Okay. Yeah, it's 25. So when we are going in reverse for number one, since we're starting at a lower point, right? but the activation energy is still at the same point. We need to go backwards. The new height of the energy uh, barrier is 25 because you're going from this side to the other side. So it needs more energy in order for the reaction to take place. Okay, even more here, right? What is, not 35, 40, yeah. It's gonna be 40, no, no worries. And then here, if you take a look at it, if it's an endothermic reaction, it's gonna be a lot easier, right? It's just gonna be, 15, okay, because the products start at a higher point. <clears throat> okay, who says that? <laughs> so yeah, the answer will be two, and then it'll be one, and then three is the fastest, yeah. Yeah. Or difference for an endothermic, for an exo, it's the sum because you got to add it for them. Yeah, yeah, that that works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty, you guys pretty comfortable with the graphs? Okay. All right. Okay, let's uh move on. Okay, so uh next part we are gonna be talking about fractions now, and so when you have a Sample of a compound, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. It says cumulative. I haven't changed it yet, but it will only be on kinetics. But we will have a cumulative exam for the final. Yeah, so don't worry. If you've studied for a cumulative, I will not disrespect the hard work you put in, and I will give you a cumulative final, okay? Yeah, after break. Yeah, yeah, but unit on the record, this video has evidence. Unit 10 is going to be just on kinetics. Okay. I should do that for fun. Yeah, sue me. Do it. I don't have any money. Okay. Do it. 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 Okay. All right. Next part. Okay. So in order for a specific molecule to overcome have to overcome the energy barrier. Okay. I don't have my mic today. Okay. So it needs to increase in the collision speed or the collision frequency, right? Okay. So the higher the temperature of the molecules, um, the more fraction of the molecules that are able to overcome that barrier. Remember, not every single reaction goes all the way. Not all the molecules become the product molecule, right? Just like how not every student becomes every every the potential they could be. Yeah, not everyone will pass this class, yeah. Okay, yes, share your analogy with us. Like, not every 
Yes, that's good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's a great one. I'm going to save that for later. Yeah, exactly. Not every talking stage, not every DM will become a relationship. And even fewer of those will become marriage. Okay, anyway. Yeah. Huh? Nah. No, actually, yeah, that's true. Never mind. I'm not going to get into my history. Okay. So this formula right here, I'll tell you guys the stories later. Okay. So, okay. The fraction of the molecules that have the energy necessary to overcome the action activation energy, we can find that fraction using this formula. So make sure you guys get this down. Okay. So the fraction, the percentage of molecules that have an energy equal to or greater than the activation energy. Basically, what percentage of the molecules can overcome that activation barrier? It It's going to depend on this formula right here. Okay. Basically, if it has enough speed, if it has enough heat and enough energy, the hotter it is, the more of these molecules can overcome that activation barrier. Yeah. Yeah, this is one is based on temperature. Yeah. Wouldn't like different molecules be slower though? Like even at the same temperature? Yeah, but we're assuming ideal gas. Oh okay. But great question. You do start calculating for for the speed of different molecules because each gas has a different speed. Uh that's not till uh physical chemistry. That's like the last chem class in undergrad. Yeah. Until not... yeah, until the end of undergrad, we assume ideal gas. Yeah. It's frustrating though, because then you start need to start taking account their elect electronic attraction and repulsion, their speed, collisions with other ones, so friction. It's fun. Should, like since we're all in eleventh grade, we should like make like an organic chem class that we could all take next. That grade. would be fun, but I don't want to teach you high schoolers organic chem. Fine, I'll just go take it and Okay, guys. So <laughs> that's true. So I want you guys to try 11.17 using that formula. After that, we will move on to the next part. Yeah. Yeah, E on the calculator. Yeah. Some. <laughs> so we have to calculate two different times, yeah. right? One has to be under the point that then this point. Are we gonna have to memorize the graphic method? Um, it's gonna it's gonna be on your paper. It's on your AP handout. All right, guys, 30 more seconds. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hello. All righty, guys, let's go over this, plug it in, and we will get our final answer. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we got to do it twice for one time at 300 Kelvin and 320 Kelvin. Shh. So let's do it at 300 first. It's going to be E okay, to the power of the activation energy. Okay, it's going to be 100 joules, so a negative 100 joules. Okay, we're going to divide that by the gas constant, which is 8.314. I'm not going to write the units of measurement. Just trust me that it cancels out. Okay, and then we're going to multiply that by 300 Kelvin. Okay. So at 300 Kelvin, the fraction of the molecules that overcome the activation barrier is 
96.1%. Okay. 0.961. Okay. Easiest way to do it is to first solve this fraction on your own and just plug the number into the E. Okay. And then at 320, it's going to be 0 0.963. So this is consistent with our, you know, the knowledge that we have. The fast, the hotter it is, higher temperature it is, the more molecules will overcome the activation energy. Wait, okay? so uh, when you plug, so if you substitute 300 for 320, it should go up to 963. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's the second answer. I rounded up probably. No, it's three. Two, three, two. I got it. I got it. All right, give me a sec. Darn you guys for making me do extra work. Where's E? Oh, there it is. No, I got point nine six three one. Yeah. So, yeah. So the zero point nine two one is that like like ninety six percent? Ninety six point one percent. Yeah. But you can leave it as a fraction. It's equivalent to the frac the percentage. This is the same thing as this. No, you can just leave it as a decimal. Yeah. This is it means the same thing mathematically as that. Yeah. So unless they specifically say write as a percentage, you don't need to write it as a percentage. Yeah. Good question, though. All right. Ready to move on, guys? And this is the last thing we will talk about today. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're assuming it's uh going to be. Hold up. A good question. Oh, 96. Then, uh, yeah, my fault. Then, I guess if you do the uh, if you do the units, it'll be per mole. Okay. Yeah, so 96.1 percent of the mole of uh, per each mole. Yeah, but if this, like, but this is just like a theoretical, like, if you were to do this in like an actual experiment, you'll get, like, you get something pretty close, you get like something different, like every time, like, yeah, slightly different. Yeah, every experiment will come out a little bit differently. Yeah. Because we're just like measuring the top that are like connected the right way. Yeah. Like but it's, I mean, you got to understand, it's like, like, a bunch like of octillions, right? We were talking about when we do uh, Avogadro's number. So if it's this percentage, you'll get something very close to it every time. It'll be, you'll, you won't have enough sig figs usually to note the difference. Yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy. All righty. Last thing. We are talking about something called Arrhenius. Okay, Arrhenius equation, right? You guys love equations like this, right? Okay, so since reaction rates are based on temperature, uh, we know that if you change the temperature, the K value will also change. Remember how I said that every reaction has its own K value? Well, every reaction at every temperature also has its own K value. I know, isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful. Okay, so there is a bunch of math that I can give you guys so that you guys can combine the equations, but because I love you all very, very much, I have combined the equation for you. It's also in your it's also in your book, but thank you for thanking me. So you just like typed it on the Yep. Hey, but I took the time to do that. Okay. It is, thank you. And I even labeled what all the values mean. Okay. So I do want to give you guys, I do want to give you a disclaimer. Um, we're not going to use this equation very often. High chance you might not see it on the test. So if you are going to ditch something and not study it, this will be the thing to ditch. Okay. Just disclaimer. But I might be saying that just to mess with you guys. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a low chance it's not going to be on the AP test. But there's also a chance I might put it on the test. Just because I know you guys will ditch this first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it does, but I don't lose sleep. I don't lose sleep over it. Yeah, it's more for you guys. If anything, it encourages me to do work harder if your grades are lower. Yeah. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if you're like ten years. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm.
basically. No, we're not even going over an example. Okay, but I'm gonna teach you. I am gonna teach you guys how to use it. Okay. Yeah, we're not even gonna plug things in, but I just need. You, I'm just gonna show you guys how to use it. Okay. Yeah, the biggest thing is finding K. So usually, the way this is gonna work is they're going to give you a reaction. Okay, so let me give you a sample reaction, and you guys don't need to write this down. Okay, A plus B is C. Okay, now. We know that at every single temperature, it's going to have a different K value. So at T1, it's going to have its own K. And then the problem is usually going to say, oh, and then we're going to change the temperature to whatever, for T2, to T2, a new temperature. Okay. And then they're going to ask you to find out basically what the new K value is. Or it could ask you the other way. It's going to give you the two K values for the reaction. And then... Um, you'll have to find a new temperature. The key thing that you do need to pay attention to is that the activation energy is not going to change, okay? The activation energy for every reaction, no matter what temperature it is, is always going to stay the same, okay? So what are these numbers? Basically yeah, exactly. It's just going to be a solving for missing variable type problem, okay? So you want to write down the definition of it. The definition of the Arrhenius react equation? Yeah. Basically, it's the equation that uh, lets you find the rate the rate constant when temperature changes. Yeah, so yeah, I'll write that down. Okay, so rate constant, so the K value, it lets you find K when temperature changes. Okay. All right, and that's pretty much it. We are actually way ahead of schedule. Congrats, guys. So, um. If we are lucky, we will be able to finish in the next class. But even if we don't, um, it'll be one and a half classes at most. Yeah, and then we'll be reviewing. I'll be going over problems up here. We'll work on FRQs and then. Yeah. Put what up? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll be putting them up and going through them, yeah. Yeah, kinetics is not something I don't I want to just give to you guys and study on your own. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, if you guys can, 